Welcome back to Field Archaeology 101. Uh, last time we were with you, we sort of left you hanging, and we were hanging onto one of these. <laughs> As you recall, uh, we were on a really hot, sweaty day, end of the summer. Sun was cooking us, and we just wanted to get out there and get under a shade tree. Uh, so as we were scraping things up, uh, my videographer candidly zoomed in on one of these, which I missed, and some of you saw and even let me know you saw it. And uh, uh, so we're going to start there. What was it? Those were the bones that came up, and, uh, and there's so many ways to look at this. So as an archaeologist, I want to increase your, your vocabulary, and today I want to just talk a little bit about uh, patterns and context, E-X-T, patterns and context, and real important with this particular find. We got all the bones out, we looked at them, and we weren't sure, we thought, hey, we got a couple little bird skulls here, but there were no eyes and no mouth, so no bird skulls. And we did the best we could. So we turned to a central, South Central Ohio uh, PhD archaeologist for his opinion. And he said, well, uh, as best he could over the internet with the pictures we sent him, he said, we're either looking at a rabbit, a squirrel, or possibly a groundhog. And then we did the next thing. And my videographer did what she does well, and that's getting on the internet. And she started to look at these. And you can find the bones of any animal on there and you can get complete skeletons. So if you're digging or if you're out walking in the field and you find something that's got you stumped, you have a place to go. So these happen to be in particular the bones of a groundhog. I'm gonna throw another picture in here real quick. And here we have the skull, which we don't have, but we do have these two uh, remnants of part of the inner ear of, uh, of this little groundhog. We do have a lower jaw, we don't have the upper jaw. So let's talk about what we have. Uh, do we have a midden, a which another word for it is a garbage pit, midden or garbage pit? Uh, possible remnants of a fire pit? Or is it just a nuance, a conundrum, something that just poof, popped into the picture? So taking the context together, and that's looking, and I did a kind of a fun little thing here. I wanted to share this with you because this is a, a thing I want in your brain. This is a Webster's on context. Looking at the whole situation, background and or environment, okay, relative to a particular event, looking at the context. So here it is. It had no patina, it had no charred or burning marks, and it had no teeth marks of a predator chewing it, and it had no evidence of a human cracking the bones to get bone marrow, and no evidence of a human sawing these bones to boil them, possibly, and draw up calcium. That's eliminating a lot of stuff all at once by context. And so it's kind of coming down to well, maybe we had a little groundhog that crawled under the tarp and died. And being under there for three years with the heat and, and as such, uh, we have a remnant. So that's our thinking on this one. I believe Jeff agrees with us as well. Moving on to some other bones. Uh, and voila, these actually are not bones after all. And they're not even uh, marshmallows, which some of you are going to say they are. These are actually snake eggs. These are the black rat snake of North America. In Ohio, uh, they're everywhere, and in particular, every spring we have one or two or three that come out of hibernation, uh, and, uh, and we always welcome their presence. They eat uh, rodents, they eat toads, they eat frogs, they eat anything that runs, that's little chipmunks, uh, they eat them. Uh, these, guys, these are usually ovate, they're about one and a half to two inches long. Uh, the little guys, when they crack, uh, hatch and come out of the eggs, they hang out for two to three years in the area. The snake itself grows to be about seven to eight foot, and yes, we had an eight footer come out of hibernating to the dismay of all the grad students that were scampering up trees and running. Uh, so you have a lot of surprises. Now, I had mentioned 
some things that weren't present. What wasn't present that none of these bones were cracked or broken like this. And this is, this is the normal situation where our, uh, our past peoples were t intentionally breaking these to get the bone marrow out, which is a huge source of protein, okay? That is missing. The other thing that's missing with this groundhog were the burnt bones. Now, I brought some really good burnt bones, but interestingly enough, these burnt bones were sawed and cut specifically. Well, why would you cut bones down into little tiny sizes? You're going to hear this time and time again from your friends, from me, from other archaeologists, that when you flip over a bunch of questions, we'll just call it one stone. When you flip over one stone, there may be two more underneath that. And so you answer this question, you answer this question, and under those two stones are nine more. And that's the way it is. It's kind of like an unfolding of information, and hopefully you'll be able to come up with some meaningful content to what we're, we're talking about. This is a midden uh, or a garbage pit that came off our site. Quite a bit of difference between this and this. Almost every bone here shows no evidence of being fired, cooked, charred whatsoever, but a few uh, do show evidence of having been in a fire. So we have elk bone, we have mostly deer bones, we have some elk bones, we have other bones in the mix. Uh, another garbage pit, this one came up from uh, near Lake Erie, just south, a little town called Milan, Ohio. And once again, you see in common where the leg bones, the longer bones were cracked so they could get the marrow out. I think one of the things that causes people to stumble, and, uh, and I can share this with you because most of us don't have a bunch of letters after our name like PhDs, etc. Um, is the fact that these people were brilliant. They were not dummies. They knew where to go for their calcium. The little bones, saw them up, boil them, get the calcium in the water, drink the water, get calcium, get their protein. They knew what they were doing. So a large midden pile on our dig site, uh, a conundrum that turned out to be just a dead groundhog <laughs> and a, a surprise with the snake eggs and another garbage pit. And these were some of the things I wanted you to see. Now for fun, I brought in some samplings of other fire pits uh, that were on the dig site. And I mentioned patterns, looking for patterns and context. So what I'm gonna do is show you a series of fire pits. And if you're able to get in here close to me, you'll be able to see these different fire pits. Now, let me grab my uh, little switchblade magnifying glass and uh, with my glass I'm able to actually look at these fragmented bones and I can see that most of them were cut. They were cut specifically to that size. Well that's interesting because I've asked several PhDs about these and they said no this is just characteristic of burnt bones and when they burn they end up like this. Maybe so but these puppies were all cut to that size. So this is one fire pit from the dig site. Let's, here's another fire. I'm going to move my light so we can get a little better lighting here for you. Another fire pit, uh, long bone, cracked, charred bones, charred bones. Okay, coming down here, another fire pit. Of course, this is pottery. I think most of us recognize pottery shards. Uh, but look at this. Patterns. Are these all sizes, all shapes? all different colors we're looking at same color very similar size very similar shape if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck has feathers like a duck it has something to say and uh, these things were processed and we're looking at the end result of little bones that were cut and processed to up their diet with calcium my opinion you're not going to hear that on a main campus Okay, let's slide over to here. Let's look at some more. I'm gonna move my light again. Let's look at a few more fire pits. And uh, there's, there is diversity in these fire pits. Uh, in this case, we have charcoal, and you can actually see the wood in the charcoal. Uh, again, these little tiny shaped pieces of cooked bone. But look here, we have more bone. Some was cooked, a tooth, and some was not cooked. Well, wait a minute, if you got a fire pit, 
They're either cooked or they're not cooked. But in this case, some were cooked, some were not cooked. Now that should raise a yellow flag that we can kick around later. Slide in this direction. Another fire pit. Uh, again, a lot of pottery in the fire pit. Interesting. If it's in a fire pit, why aren't these shards cooked? Well, some are and some aren't. Once again, shape, color, size, these guys are present along with charcoal. One last frame to look at up here. More uh, uh, shards of pottery. Uh, of course, flint, flakes of flint, debitage, broken tools that were uh, thrown in the fire with a few four letters with, <laughs> with their final thoughts. But look, once again, look at this. Color, shape, size. And this is unilaterally present on the site, looking at close to 100 fire pits. That makes a statement. A lot of times in archeology, span you don't have answers and you won't get answers, or at least not now. And you've gotta be satisfied with that. If you don't like that, get a different job because there's a lot of unanswered questions in archeology. span Well. Bingo, after having looked at this, having prepared and uh, for you folks, it dawned on me, well, wait a minute, could I be looking at a fire pit placed on top of a garbage pit? Is it possible that that fire pit cooked a various amount of, of uh, bones, uh, some of the uh, shards, whatever, and so I want to add that to the mix. Another possibility, and I've never heard anybody talk about it. It's not that big of a whoa moment. It's just look at this other possibility that we face. Here I am sliding around in different chairs. Um, so, what we've looked at now fire pits, garbage pits, uh, middens. We're looking at bones. We're looking at an anomaly that we discovered in the process of just looking at groundhog bones, color, shape, size. These were intentionally cut down to this size. Are we discovering that the people are actually really highly intelligent and they knew where to go for their vitamins and minerals? I think so. And then uh, we kind of left you hanging once before, and I'm sorry when we do this, but we had talked about paint pots, uh, nut cracking stones, things of that nature. And uh, just to give you a highlight of what's coming next, uh, are these uh, cup stones. What the heck are they? Uh, and you'll find that these guys vary a lot. They're on different stones. They're on different stones. They're on different stones. What in the world are we looking at? So let's take a look at that uh, next time we get together with you folks. In the meantime, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, man, it's a joy being with you, and, and I just want to invite you all back next time. See you later.